Bro, look at that mommy. Holy shit. If you guys aren't down bad, I don't know what I don't know what you guys could be down bad for, man. Oh, look at that mommy face. Yeah, grab me. Oh. Alright, kiss me. Oh! Hey yo, damn bad for female MC, you know what I'm saying? Oh yo! Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Honkai Star Rail CBT2 video. And today we're gonna be doing a first impressions kind of thing for this Honkai Star Rail game. I think a lot has changed since CBT1. There were a lot of like different features, a lot of different story that I actually did not recognize at all, despite studying a lot of it. And so I actually did go ahead and stream this game for about three hours. So we're gonna have about three hours worth of progress on this. Not really a problem. Problem. I'm just going to show you guys what we've learned so far. The first thing that I do want to comment on is the world building of the game. It is like absolutely incredible and I think for most of you who know Mihoyo or Hoyoverse and how they do things in terms of game design, we can almost always say that with Mihoyo games you can kind of expect a certain level of quality. And so here I am just in the overworld, I think I am doing the story and I can see a mob ahead. However, before we go into there, let me show you all of the different menus. Because what you are going to notice is a remarkably similar experience to Genshin Impact. So we've got the icons up on the top right hand corner, we've got the mini map on the top left, and then we've got the party on the right hand side over here. So to kick things off, I have the 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see that we have the character swap system in this game as well. And the only purpose that this really serves is kind of like a pre-battle bonus. So if I go up to that thing over there, and then I use the this one or this one, uh, let me move my camera. So like these two skills down here, the left click as well as the E skill, it will trigger some kind of bonus when we finally get into the battle. And so what this means is that depending on the mob that's over there, I'm just going to walk up close so you can see that there is an elemental indicator on the top of the screen, right? So you can see the fire is glowing red and that means that if I use this character Asta, who is a fire unit to attack that character, then that enemy is going to be weakened, whether it be in the form of a break or some other mechanics. And so at this point in the game, that is the utility of the character switching. It's not really as crazy as Genshin's where you can combine elements together and then they form like a massive fire vortex. However, with that being said, let's move on to these guys over here. So I'm going to click on the first one. And as you can see, this is exactly the same as Genshin. It is your login bonuses. All of the event details are in the first one. The second one is your wishes or your warp, they call it in this game. And so as you can see over here, beginner warp, we have 20% off for the set of 10 warps. A five star character is guaranteed within 50 warps. Now, this is quite different to what Genshin offered. Genshin offered the guaranteed five star character within 20. So in my eyes, this is kind of like a downgrade from what we already know. However, on the other hand, we have the at least one four star every 10 warps, very, very similar to Genshin. And if you're looking at the UI, if you're looking at everything over here, I click C for character, it is really, really inspired by Genshin. Like the entire UI with all of the light traces, with all of the different stats, we've got the stats on this side over here. We've got the character navigation all along the top and then this guy over here to see the entire character list. It's very heavily inspired is the best way to put it. So in terms of the rates, I don't think they are actually published yet. However, you can probably expect it to be similar to Genshin 0.7% rate up. Because if I click down here on this one, view details, there is like pretty much nothing. You can see all the characters, but there are no rates. There is the possibility that they are technically still trying to decide on the rates. Maybe they want to bump them up. Maybe they want to bump them down. But with that said, that is the gacha system. You know what? Why don't we do a 10 roll? Okay, it's freaking gacha addicts anonymous. All right, we're going to go ahead and confirm. Let's hit it. And uh, it looks like a whole bunch of depression again. Three star, three star, three star, three star. Oh, okay. Asta dupe, Asta dupe, you know, it's okay. Three star, three star, three star. And this is the Genshin Impact experience. It is a lot of three stars and one four star on the end. So my guys, do remember that this is CBT. You didn't see a summon animation. They're probably working on it. The next thing I want to show you guys is the character screen. So I think in terms of progression, a lot of you are dying to know. So here are all of the different stats that are possible to actually influence. And then if I close that up and you guys can't see it, so I'm gonna switch my webcam off. You'll see that every character has five skills. So we've got a basic attack. We've got a normal skill kind of like your E. You've got your ultimate, which is kind of like your Q. However, in this game, it's not really E and Q. And then you've got your talent as well as your technique. And so in battle, what you are predominantly relying on is the basic attack, the skill, and the ultimate. And then coming in, we've got the talent and the technique. The technique you can actually use on the overworld, which is what we're in now too. For example, the trailblazer heals everybody. Other than that, I can come over here and go onto traces. And this is kind of like your skill tree, which is really interesting because we are essentially getting our talents in a different way here. As you can imagine, as you level up, you can push each of these skill levels up. And then there's also some raw stats increase. So you can see this one attack increase by 4%. Now coming back over to this one over here, we've got light current, which is essentially your weapon. And so as you can see, increased basic attack damage and skill damage 
average of its wear up by 28%. And what's interesting about these light cones is that they can only be equipped with their associated paths, so my trailblazer is on the path of the destruction. Moving through it, we have the Adolins over here, which is essentially your constellation system if you have played the Genshin Impact. And for you guys who have not played Genshin Impact, which I doubt, this is essentially your dupe system, and that's going to lead us to the last system, which is Relics. It's your artifact system, it is your main stat, sub stats with a set effects. Oh dear lord. <laughs> RNG grind, right? And so whilst we're on the screen, I do want to mention that I am giga down bad for our female MC over here. And to be honest, the design of the characters are actually quite nice. Like, they are a little bit less bland than Genshin Impacts, but not as out there as Honkai Impact 3. I think you guys already know, I am really into like the stylish, into like the cute, the beautiful looking stuff, and that is exactly what this is. And so in terms of character design, like for me personally, it is absolutely S tier. However, you guys may not think so and I think that this is going to be a running theme across the entire video. There are going to be a lot of things that I like and a lot of things that you probably won't like. Like you might say that I have shit taste. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to whack this guy and as you can see we are entering the battle. The weakness has been triggered with the physical icon and we are now in. That monster just got freaking wrecked. I personally think that the music design in this game is actually fantastic. And as you can see, we are using our skills over here, Q or E, and we're going to be firing them away on these monsters. So this monster has a fire weakness. I'm going to use my fire character, Asta, and I'm going to single attack it. Boom, it is broken. Down over to the left, you can see we have these charged up ult looking icons. So if I click this one over here, we're going to activate March 7th ult. And I'm going to select the enemy team, and that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to ult them. So for now, I'm just going to bump the music down and so we can hear it while well, I can hear myself talk. So there are some interesting mechanics in this turn-based system, right? So we're going from bottom to top. The top user or the top unit has the priority. So it is now March 7th turn and then it's going to be Trailblazers. What is really interesting about this active battle system is that when you use an alt, you actually get another turn. And so what that means is that I can actually use my alt at any time. So I'm going to like hit Asta and she is going to give everybody the blessing. I do believe it's a crit rate or a speed buff up. Uh, speed boost. There you go. And so I can do that again with the Trailblazer. This is going to be Stardust Ace. She's going to be getting extra damage, I think. And so you can see what's happened here is that the Trailblazer has gotten the turn and then we are going to go into March 7th and then Trailblazer again. That, I think, is going to set this game, like the strategy of this game, a little bit apart from its peers, like Epic 7 and Summoner's War. And so that's really the game in a nutshell. Well, the battle system anyway. I can run around. I can go activate like some of these. Oh. Okay, activate a cutscene, I mean. I'm going to flick through a couple of pages of this dialogue because the voice acting is as you expect. It's good. I think you guys are going to recognize a lot of these voices. So like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. You can interact with some of the environments. We have a treasure chest over here. I'm going to go loot it and then there should be a barrel over here. I can go attack that and maybe it will drop something to me. However, we are going to walk up to this guy and I'm going to use the skill E, the skill down here that you can't really see. And we are going to break him according to the ice element. I'm going to run up to him and bada bing, bada boom. And he is going to attack or get attacked by the weakness. Otherwise, in terms of the combat system, I think it's pretty straightforward and you guys like already understand. It's very, very similar to, like I said, your Epic 7, your Summoner's War, and some of those other competitors, right? Like the animations in this game, it is top tier. The, everything that you would expect, like the music, the design, the animations, the sound, it is without a doubt that this is a Mihoyo game. All right, and so that's kind of it for the battle system. I do think that there are a lot of different possibilities with like those kinds of mechanics. And so before we go to the weaknesses of the games, like the areas which could be improved, I do want to summarize like everything that I really like about this game. Again, first of all, the music is absolutely banging. When we were on stream, we just like couldn't like stop bobbing our heads because of how awesome the music was, but that's kind of to be expected. Second of all, the animated scenes in this game are incredible. I think all of them have been better than Genshin Impacts, like every single one of them. Third of all, the story is actually really freaking compelling. This is essentially a light novel or a visual novel's dream. Number four, the character designs are just top tier, like holy crap. What do you call it when you simp for yourself? I, I don't know, man. I don't freaking know. And so in terms of some of the lukewarm systems, I do want to say, like, introducing the relic system again, like, I'm kind of okay with it, especially, like, since from Genshin Impact, we've kind of been farming until, like, the end of time. And it's relatively okay to get, like, the set pieces. It's not too bad, but we're gonna mold a lot, especially in the early game. In terms of dupes, it's kind of okay. Like, I'm kind of used to it. For those of you who don't really like the constellation system in Genshin Impact, you won't like this at all. As for light currents, it's the same as the weapon system. Like, the the fact that it has borrowed a lot of these systems from Genshin, I'm not really pro or against it, it's kind of just like 
it's lukewarm. It's it's nice, like they're building on something that already works. And so yeah, as you guys can tell, like through all of this gameplay, the game is quite performant. We are running it at 60 FPS on all of the high settings. And so let's start talking about the things which I think a lot of you are not going to like, which is first of all, well, this is a turn-based game. Now this is a pretty good example of what you guys may not like about this game. And it's that there are an overwhelming amount of cutscenes as well as the inability to skip. So nowhere can you see a skip button. As the game stands right now, it is very, very dialogue heavy. Like I could probably be talking in this one for an extra like minute or two. And obviously as a pro that I forgot to mention, we have Bronya in the game. Like, I don't know, does anybody not like Bronya? <laughs> and so 30 seconds later, we are still in the cutscene. It's, yeah, like I said, it's very, very dialogue heavy. I think there are a lot of you who are going to find this game very, very slow paced. And so after that battle, we have another cutscene. And this is actually a lot of action for the standards of Honkai Star Rail, because typically speaking, it's like, okay, I talk to you and then I talk to you and then, oh, mommy. All right, I... Uh, yeah, this is this is gonna be good. And so as you guys can probably tell, I lost to Bronya on purpose. And let's see what happens when we actually lose. I, I haven't lost before, so we'll see. And our party is down and that is a defeat. Okay, that's, that's it. Oh, okay, we just get put to a next save point. My guys, I'm gonna eat my words real quick. You can see on the screen, skip the story. However, you can only skip the story if you've actually seen it once before. So I'm gonna click cancel there and you can see there is that skip button. I'm gonna click confirm and we're gonna go all the way over here. Skip again and bada bing bada boom. I, I don't think I can beat it again. Uh, let me let me just get out of this. And so yeah, that's almost my first impression of this game. I do want to come over to this one over here to show you guys something. And what I'm showing you guys is a couple of things. So first of all, you have Pom Pom over here, which can take me to the express passenger compartment, which is on the star rail. We've got the simulated universe button over here, which is going to take us to kind of like an end game mode where you have to do some kind of content for uh, every week. For me personally, I'm not really a big fan of something like this. Uh, you can see that there is a resin energy based system up here. And then the biggest thing on the screen, as you can see, the maps, uh, it makes it really not feel like open world. So I can't really call this an open world game. It very much feels like a stage game, just not with like explicit stages, like stage one, two, stage one, three, uh, hard mode, uh, two, four, stuff like that. It's, it's almost like that, but not really. I was personally hoping that it would be a little bit more open world, but yeah, that's, that's my own disappointment. I think a lot of people actually don't like the open world nature of Genshin Impact, and that might be a pro to you. And the last thing I do want to mention, which is utterly frustrating, is that you can't jump. You cannot jump. I mash my spacebar so much just because like I kind of expect it to let me to jump, but it doesn't, it doesn't let you. It doesn't let me jump at all, man. It's, it's freaking weird. And so yeah, here is simulated universe. I'm gonna go in and click onto exploration mode. They are all level 15. I'm probably gonna get absolutely dumpstered, but uh, let's, let's give it a shot. All right, and so we are in the simulated universe floor number one. I think I just gotta go around and kill things essentially. That's kind of the TLDR. There isn't really anything else that you can really do here. So bada bing bada Boom, no cutscenes to actually disturb me. I can go ahead and clear out all the mobs if I can. Now here we've got something interesting. Aeons will use their special power to aid your battles in simulated universe. All right, I'll freaking take that. So it looks like this guy is an Aeon. I'm gonna go ahead and get to his turn. I wanna see what actually happens. So got that, we've got March 7 coming up next. And then we've got my Giga Strong Trailblazer over here. Bada bing, bada boom. Aeon intervention. Oh, that was, was kind of weak. It was. <laughs> Awkward. And so my guys, I just finished that battle over here. And as you can see, we can select a blessing. I think some people are calling this kind of like the roguelike mode. It is very, very similar to the Elysian Realm game mode on the Honkai Impact 3. And so what I can do here is I can go ahead and click one of these, select it, confirm it, and I'm going to have that buff for the rest of this match. So my guys, I did forget to mention that there is a two times and an auto button up here. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can see they are going to do a whole bunch of random stuff. Hopefully it is optimal. I don't actually no if okay that was not optimal okay yep all right i see I, I guess that answered my question and so yeah i think that pretty much sums up my experience with honkai star rail i personally am very very excited i'm very excited for everything about this game however i do want to acknowledge that this game is a little bit more niche than i thought it would be like i thought it'd be turn-based game 
right? Like against some of the Epic 7s or whatever. It's just that Epic 7 summoners well, like they actually feel faster. Maybe it's because they have like a three times speed or something, or maybe it's not that they feel faster. It's that this game is kind of feeling a little bit slow at this point. And so for me personally, I am still very hyped for this game. I am a very story driven person, although a lot of you do know me as a story skipper. And so if you guys do share that same kind of quality, the appreciation for story as me, then I think you will enjoy Honkai Star Rail. Like there are a lot of dialogues. There is a lot of lore. However, if you did kind of fall asleep during like this entire video, then maybe this game is not for you. And I completely respect that. And so with that, my guys, I am going to call it quits and pass on the question to you. And so my guys, from everything that I've shown you today, how do you feel about this game? How do you feel about the designs? How do you feel about the sound going on in the background, which is super, super cozy? How do you feel about the different systems, whether they are inspired by Genshin Impact or not? Let me know down in the comments below, and I would really appreciate it if you do drop a comment. So thank you guys so much. And so if you guys did enjoy this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell thing. But otherwise, as my trailblazer once said, all good things must come to an end, just like the CBT in a few days. God damn it. No. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video or stream. Bye-bye.